Hello, and welcome to the Bamboo Lab Podcast with your host, Peak Performance Coach, Brian Bosley. Are you stuck on the hamster wheel of life, spinning and spinning, but not really moving forward? Are you ready to jump off and soar? Are you finally ready to sculpt your life? If so, you've landed in the right place. This podcast is created and broadcast just for you. All of you strivers, thrivers, and survivors out there. If you'd like to learn more about Brian and the Bamboo Lab, feel free to reach out to explore your true peak level at www.bamboolab3.com. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Bamboo Lab podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Bosley, and I believe we are on episode 86 or 87 right now. You have me alone again this week as we await the arrival of some better equipment so we can bring guests on with less technical issues. You're going to have me alone for maybe one more episode until we uh, get back to our old routine. We have some amazing guests lined up and we have several that will be getting interviewed or at least scheduled this week. So stay tuned. All right. uh, I want to read a heart letter that came in just a few days ago. And uh, wow, this one came from my daughter. So she was in Vegas for a conference, and she wrote me at uh, 6.41 a.m. on, I believe, Thursday or Friday. Uh, and she said, I've been catching up on your podcast while out here. I'm very proud of you, Dad, and I love you very much. <laughs> hey, you know I couldn't resist reading that one out. That one brought a tear to my eye, man. And uh, I just want to wish a happy birthday to two people In my life, my amazing sister, Jeannie, happy birthday, sister, and to my great friend, Gretchen, happy birthday. I'll be seeing you in a couple of days, hopefully. All right. um, I've struggled with the content of this episode all week long. I've changed it. I've completely changed the format two or three times. And, um, but I had a nice conversation with some, an amazing person this morning and she convinced me that, uh, just be you, man. And so I'm going to read actually this morning's journal and then I'm going to rant for a little bit. Okay. But this is raw. For those of you who don't really know me, which is the vast majority of you, I have never been a person who likes to expose my weaknesses. I've always been, up until a few years ago, I would hold all of my frailties and flaws and, you know, I would hold them tight and try to share to the world my best side. And quite frankly, it doesn't work, man, because it doesn't allow you to really stand up and say, here's me. I'm this person. Love me or fucking leave me. Doesn't matter. Vulnerability is the greatest strength. And as I became vulnerable one day on an episode, I got a text from an amazing friend of mine, very successful, kind human being. He said, now you are unconquerable. And I believe that. I believe vulnerability is the only thing that can make us unconquerable. So I'm going to read today a little bit of my journal from this morning. This is Sunday, May 7th, 2023. I wrote, I feel a bit confused lately. I feel as if I'm running top speed toward a cliff on purpose, almost a self-punishment, some pent-up anger driving me. I have been drinking too much these past couple of months. I have been sloppy with my finances and losing some of my focus. This was difficult to write, trust me. I often feel like I want to crawl out of my own skin. There are bad memories and painful memories inside me. I believe a fresh start that's coming soon will be very powerful for me. But for now, I must simply be stronger, more in line with my true peak identity, my values, and my dreams. This feels like a slow suicide, and I'm fairly certain that it comes from my resistance to change and growth and my fears of success. I'm the poster child for both of these, even though I I coach my clients on these challenges. I guess it's human condition, and I'm just a human. But I guess it's also a lot easier and more effective to lead others through the swamp 
when you too are waist deep and you are in front. I really don't know what to think about that. And I'm not sure what you think about that. You might be thinking, what in the hell is he talking about? But we taught, mentioned last week, when you're going through change and growth, it's the most challenging thing you can go through. And that's why so few people will go through it. We, As I said, probably 50, 60 times on this podcast, we have that little part of our, of our brain called the amygdala. And that thing is does not like to change. It does not like us to grow. It likes us to stay in the status quo. It likes us to stay in a very small comfort zone because there we are protected. But when you start changing and growing, as I mentioned in the previous episode, when you start seeing great things happen in your life, you go through three stages. The first one is called RAID. It's an acronym for Resistance, Anger, uh, um, Denial, and Ignoring. So I guess Resistance, Anger, Ignoring, and Denial. You don't feel like you need to change, or you'd hide the need to change, or you refuse to think you have to change, or you get uncomfortable. But a lot of us can get through that phase because sometimes we don't even know we're in it. We just get through it without even realizing it's a subconscious thing. But then we get into stage two, which is resistance. And I can tell you, man, over the past six months, that one has had me by the throat. It has. And it's an incredibly uncomfortable position to be in. And, and, and it's based on the fact that so many things are going well in my life, my personal life, my, my client practice, my, the, this podcast that you all support. Everything's going so well that my brain is saying, wait, wait, you know, you know hold on, hold on, hold on, man. This is all uncomfortable. This is all new uncharted territory. Go back, go back, retreat to where you were. Go back to that smaller version of yourself. You're safer there. You're more comfortable. You have less responsibility, less expectations. And I'll tell you, I've coached this material for 20 some years and it's hit me over the course of my, of my life, but it really, really has hit me more so in the last six months. And I, I, you know, I was, I was told by my former boss back when I worked for American Express Financial Advisors, he called me into his office in Livonia, Michigan one day. And he said, you know, hey, I, I have high expectations of you and I have big plans for you. And his quote was, but you're fucking them up. And as a 28-year-old man, I'm like, whoa, wow, you know, the vice president is telling me this. And he said, every time you have big success, you self-implode. You do th- something stupid. And I'm like, no idea what he meant, but I knew it was true. You couldn't argue with the facts. But it wasn't until a few years later after I'd left the company and started my consulting firm that I realized what it was. It's this innate fear of success. I have an innate fear of success. And the thing is, after studying and researching and working with so many thousands of people over the past 20 some years, what I've realized is that the vast majority of people have fear of success. We innately fear becoming successful in this world. And it's crazy because if you fear something and yet every day you're striving to get to that something, man, can you imagine how that plays a mind game on you? It's like driving with your emergency brakes on. I, everybody wants to be successful, whatever that means to you, money, professional, credibility, reputation, romance, health, spiritual, whatever success means to you. If you fear success, but yet every day you're pushing towards success, whew, that's a mind game. That's a mind game. And and I I don't want to go through fear of success again because I'd like you to go back, as I mentioned last week, and listen to episode eight, which was recorded and I believe it was streamed on March 7th of 2022. Go back to that episode. I went back to it this uh, this morning. I was going to redo the episode and revamp it. I thought, no, 
that episode, that whatever I said back in March or March of 22, I'd say the same words today. We just don't like change. We don't as people. We repel from growth and development. We avoid the road less traveled. I mean, if you disagree with that, think about, look around. Look how many people are choosing to escape the dark world of drugs and alcohol. They're buying lottery tickets to score the big win. Or they're being conned by charlatans pawning to get rich or lose weight fast. All that garbage we see out there. We have these celebrity speakers that convince you if you can walk across a bed of coals, you'll gain instant confidence. Now, what that gains is a little bit of money in their bank account. I've tried these things. The needle didn't move. You know, life is an adventure, man. It's a battle. It's a test and it's a challenge. It's not comfortable. And I think so often we, we have this, this competition with others. We look at social media. We watch other people, their glorious lives. We see the perfection of their existence. They put their pictures on there. Then they start to filter things and they start to shape them, their bodies. And they start to, you know, act. You, you look at these people and you know, these people who live this life on Facebook are probably extremely miserable. They're hiding behind some deep-rooted pain. Vulnerability is the ticket. Exposing yourself to yourself and being okay with that. Being okay with the fears you carry. Because until you can admit them to yourself and then eventually admit them to others, you will never overcome them. You can't fight something and conquer something that you can't hold in your hand, or in this case, case, hold in your head. Life is an opportunity, man. This time, this date, this month, right now for you, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for all of us to be a little bit better than we were yesterday. It's all about progress, and it's not at all about perfection. And as we see perfection or perceive perfection, we see this false perception in others. We put up our, our own standards to that. And we say, oh my God, I'm failing. I'm failing. That's not perfection we see. That's their fear. That's their insecurities. And we're comparing our insecurities to what we think is their perfection when really we're just looking at their insecurities being ex- being um, expla- uh, um, displayed as perfection. Every single moment provides us an opportunity to progress and to improve and to grow. We just tend to fall in these fears and these self-doubts so often because we fall into a trap of ruminating about our past failures and our shithead decisions. I know I do. We sometimes allow them to identify or to uh, define our our self-identity. And I want you to think about that for a minute, your self-identity. Your self-identity drives everything in your life, everything. Every single one of your feelings, your thoughts, your behaviors, your actions, they, it, it defines that. It, it drives that. And without this kind of um, intentional focus on who we identify as, as, how can we really improve? How can you become a better version of yourself if you don't know who you want to become? Or you really don't even know who you currently are. If you don't know who you are or who you want to become, how can you focus on what needs to do, what you need to do to progress forward in your life? So right now, I'm going to ask you two questions. Who are you? Right now, who are you? Strip away the facade. Strip away the Facebook, the Instagram, the LinkedIn, the Snapchat, the TikTok, the LinkedIn, all what you, what you portray out there or what you portray to strangers. Who are you at the core? Physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, professionally, financially. Look at your metaphorical, look in the metaphorical mirror and see who you really are. The good the beautiful, the bad, and the ugly. That's you. And I'll guarantee, if I put you up to an average person out there, 
another person, very comparable. Because we do define ourselves so often by the, are the worst of ourselves. And we define others by the best of themselves. And we find this competition, this comparison, and it will drive you bat shit crazy if you continue to do that. Because you can never be as good as another person's make-believe or false perfection. So who are you? And secondly, who do you want to become? Who do you want to become? Who, what is the best version of yourself? That first question of who you are is one of the most primal and most important questions you will ever ask yourself. No other living creature on our planet has the ability to comprehend this one. Maybe some primates and monkeys, a little bit, but it's very, very primal in them. You know, I've, I've often wondered, and I still do, I mean, and I think it's healthy. Am I really living the life I was designed and destined to live? There's never really a clear answer for that one. At least until recently. And the reason is pretty simple. I didn't know who I wanted to become. So, so much of our lives and so for most of our entire lives, actually, we simply pass through on cruise control. We are given this identity sometime during the course of our childhood that we now identify as. And then we continue to add to this identity by based on what people say, based on uh, teachers, family, friends, media, uh, bosses, coworkers, and also by our own experiences and our own thoughts and behaviors and emotions. We start to build this identity. And we never really stop to ask ourselves, is this really who I am? Every single living creature, every single element, mineral, or particle in the universe has a distinct beginning, middle, and an end. Now, you might argue with me that rocks may not have too much of an end, but they change. They grow. They break down. I'm sure over millions of years, they will eventually crumble. But everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, you look at the way animals live, pets, trees, plants, flowers, all these things that grace their lives. Think of how they live their lives with never a moment to say, okay, I want to become better. I want to vision, envision tomorrow. No other animal or creature can think about tomorrow. Monkeys, they say they've been able to train them a little bit to realize that they're not going to get this food tomorrow. They're going to get this particular food. They're not going to get it today. They're going to get it tomorrow. And they think they have a small con- uh, conception of what there's what the, the human is saying. But my dog sitting here next to me right now, Chloe, he doesn't know what tomorrow is. She knows this moment and that's it. You know, you have to ask ourselves, are we really okay um, taking that one primary thing that you have, your living existence, and letting somebody else tell you who you ought to be? My guess is that you come onto this podcast for a reason. That reason could be so many things. Maybe you're looking for a better version of yourself, something better, something more authentic. Maybe you're looking to make more money. You're looking to be able to love your spouse better, find that love of your life. Maybe you're looking to feel physically more healthy, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually. Maybe you just come on here because you're driving and you want, to, you want to bide the time while you're driving. But either way, you're here right now. You're looking for something. And I think the something you're looking for, if I really were to dissect and sit down with you one-on-one for a couple of hours, you're looking to find out who the hell you are and who the hell you want to become. The problem is we've allowed other people to make those choices for us. And everyone around us that tries to create this identity for us, they have an agenda. And some of those agendas are designed to keep you down. Others are sometimes designed to to destroy you, and some are designed to help you. Many of the people you love have created this identity for you by 
because they love you and they want to help you. Teachers, parents, friends, family members, bosses, the media, blah, 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 blah. You know, they bring in these, this love to you. They bring in this, this identity. They try to tell you who you are. And it's a Trojan horse. Even though they did it out of love. But when, once that Trojan horse gets through the walls, you don't have control anymore. Your identity is now created. And more than likely, if I were a betting man, I would bet that the identity is not correct. The chance that someone else can tell you who you are and who you ought to be and who you want to become, oh my God, it's improbable, highly, highly impossible, if not, or highly, if not highly, highly impossible. You know, you opened your eyes this morning, you got out of bed, you put your feet on the ground and you placed your feet gently on the floor. And at that moment, when you became sentient, when you became awake, You identified as a certain person. You identified as a specific man or woman, something. And and deeper deeper than that, you'd identified the kind of man or woman you'd be today. And that identity starts everything off. And everything you do today, from this point forward, everything you think, feel, say, do, will be designed based on what you identified as. You identified yourself as a certain individual with specific attributes and qualities. Did you identify as energetic, productive, empathetic, or did you identify as lazy, scared, and insecure? Did you identify as healthy or dysfunctional, an amazing mother or father, or uh, someone who doesn't have a lot of empathy for their children, who doesn't have a lot of patience for their spouse? Did you uh, uh, identify as a wise, strong person or a weak, closed-minded person? It carries you through the day. And nothing else in your life has more power than your self-identity. In that self-identity, man, there's, it's, you ha- if we don't recognize it, then all of a sudden, the negative parts of that self-identity are carrying us through the day, along with the positive too. But the negative are, uh, aspects of our self-identity are carrying us in a, in a direction we don't want to go. And we wonder why happiness, health, success, true love, whatever we're looking for, is so difficult to gain, to get, when really it's not. It's relatively simple. It's because we have these two forces pulling on us all day long, the good way we identify and the negative way we identify. You're carrying a fake ID around, just like you did when you were 18, 19, and 20. You're carrying an ID that somebody else gave you. Other aspects of your existence gave you that right now is completely false. Your teacher told you that you were you were stupid. Boom, there's an identity. Your mom or dad said that you're lazy. Boom, there's an identity. So what happens, and I, I love this quote by Michelangelo. Michelangelo wrote a, he had... Uh, uh, created this this uh, angel outside this cathedral out of marble. And when they asked him how he did it, he said, I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I set him free. I've quoted that so many times in this podcast. When you were born, you were pure. You were who you are and nothing else mattered, man. You, your passions, desires, needs, objective, perfect. You had no, no social self-consciousness, no fears other than falling in loud noises, which I think most humans are born with. I mean, you didn't want to hurt anybody. You knew no limitations. It's purity. Then over time, as I said, people started adding things to you. They started putting these layers of marble around your angel. Boom, boom, layer. This happened, that happened. So-and-so said this. You saw this on the media. You know, you asked somebody out and they, they, re- they turned you down, rejected you. Boom, there's a layer of I'm rejectable. I'm not lovable. I mean, this, all this stuff happens. And all of a sudden, you're a block of marble. 
And that little angel is still trapped in there. An overweight man lies on the couch during a beautiful, you know, Saturday afternoon. Pizza boxes, potato chip bags, cover the floor and the coffee table around him. Think about that. He sweats. He has no energy, very little strength to make it to the bedroom to change his out of his sweatpants. His self-esteem is low. His confidence, damn near non-existent. He has no discernible goals, no passions. His idea, his identity is deeply mired in that being that person. So when you think you're that person, what do you do? You behave as that person. What if he decided tomorrow, I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to get up and change a little bit of my identity. I'm going to walk one time around the block. And instead of a bag of chips, I'm going to have an apple. The rest of my day, I do the same thing. He does that for a couple days. Then all of a sudden, three days later, twice around the block. He eats an apple and a banana. Does that for a few days. Then he goes three times on the block. and Diet gets better. Over the course of time, he starts exercising more, taking more, uh, eating a lot more holistic, organic, uh, non, uh, non-GMO food or uh, no processed foods. Over the course of time, he now starts to identify as an energetic, healthy, athletic, ambitious person. So when he gets up in the morning, he now starts to identify more as that. So what is his behavior going to reflect? That identity. The way you act every moment of today is a complete reflection of how you identified when you put your feet on the ground this morning. And if you don't like how you act, we got to change the identity. And if you do, maybe you like the way you, like, you act, but you don't love it. You need to change your identity. Life is a damn struggle, man. It is nothing but one challenge after another. Some of the challenges might be small, some are average, and some are just incredibly massive and scary as hell. But regardless of the size of the challenges, life was never designed to be easy. It was never designed to be a safe haven for the meek people and the uninspired. Look, look at the back at the course of our history. The women and women, women and men who have changed the projectile, they were never sitting there waiting for life to get easy. They were the individuals who got their teeth kicked and punched in the gut, scarred and bloodied their way. They carved paths that were never seen before or even considered. They realized that they needed to change things and make those desperate efforts and make those challenging decisions to change their identity so they could change the world. Wow, this is that it's one of the most important topics I can ever discuss. I want you to think of who you are. And who you want to become. You know, many people are really okay just being a utility player in life. Being an apologist. Going through life. Taking up space. And if that's you, then no judgment. Not at all. If you are comfortable carrying the cloak that was given to you by others through life, that choice is yours. But this podcast probably isn't for you. I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I set him free. What is your angel in the marble? And what do you need to do to carve away all that excess marble around the angel so you can get back to that core version of who you are? Because you are the block of marble, you are the angel, and you are the sculptor. You are the work of art. But the question is, can you see that angel? Do you know who you want to become? When, the look, when you look in the marble or in the mirror, do you see the, the block of marble? Or do you see the angel? Do you have the courage to ask that question and answer that question? To pick up that chisel and start 
pounding away and laboring away to get back to your true core peak identity. The vast majority of humans only see the block of marble. They see what other people have created for them, the layers that have been placed on them, their fears, their insecurities, the impure thoughts they, they've had. They see the, the mistakes they've made. They see and hear the negative things that people have said to them or about them. They see what's in front of them. The obvious. That's what the mirror tells us. They see what the world has created for them to be their reality. But I think deep down in their soul, in your soul, where you sometimes fear to travel, man, I think you know that angel resides in you. You know you're, there's something greater in you. There's something worth sculpting for. I always wonder what the world would be like today if every person knew this over the past millennium. If we would have just simply looked in the mirror and said, who am I? And who do I want to become? If we could recognize the block of marble and realize that it's false, and we could look deep inside that block and see that purity, that angel, that true peak identity that resides inside of each one of us, and everyone would have chiseled away and could chisel away, I would almost guarantee there'd be no wars, no famine, no murder, no rape, no drug or alcohol abuse. Because purity does not allow that. But that didn't happen. And that's why I think this podcast for me, even though it's completely unscripted and I'm winging it, which is not like me with these podcasts, is the most important one. Because we could now do that from this point forward. If all of you Bamboo Pack members on six continents and 54 countries and uh, whatever we're at, almost 1,500 cities around the world, we can start doing that. The impact we can all make have, can have a trickle effect that could completely change our planet. This is how we solve problems. This is how we change the world is we start with ourselves. Because really the majority of humans throughout our lives, we run, we hide, we do everything that we can to avoid pain (laughs) and not do the hard stuff. Because looking in that block of marble and seeing and peering and seeing and looking for that angel and then taking the, the, the chisel and the hammer and sculpting away to find that purity and get back to that, that's a painful journey. It's a challenging journey, man. It's a lot of work. It's intellectual, emotional, physical, spiritual work. It's painful. We kind of have this fear avoidance that I've talked about before. We believe, I think, that if we keep the chisel and the the hammer down, then we will enrich our lives and lengthen our, our existence here. Nothing could be further from the truth. The avoidance of pain is a futile effort. Pain is our reality. Pain is a constant in our existence. Our purpose in life is not to avoid pain, but to embrace it, period. To choose the pain that we will accept during our time here. You know, when I was a kid, some of the, I had an amazing childhood overall, but there were a couple of things that were very painful. I wouldn't have chosen that. Or would I ever choose it for somebody else? But it was a fact. A reality that plunged me to he- and head on into something I had to accept and work on. And I knew that my choice was not whether to avoid pain or to choose pain. It was simply to choose the right type of pain. And really, if you want to survive... You, there's only one choice. Life gives us two choices. We can choose the pain of hard work, sacrifice, blood, sweat, tears, 
picking up that chisel and hammer and sculpting away at that excess marble to find that true peak identity inside of us. We can choose that level of pain. That one hurts, man. When you choose to do things that are that are difficult and challenging, getting up in the morning to work out, to work out, throwing away the crap stuff in your in your cupboards and getting healthy foods, you choose to try to um, increase your sales at work, show more love to your spouse or loved ones. When you try to make these changes in your life, man, it is hard. It hits you right in the face right now. But it's a short term pain. And it's a growth pain. That's the pain that you grow from. So you can choose that pain of, 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 of hard work right now. Or you can choose not to choose that pain. But what's going to happen is you are inevitably choosing another pain. That's the pain of regret. You only have those two choices. Pain of hard work now or pain of regret later. Pain of hard work now or pain of regret later. There is no third option. When we pick up that chisel and that hammer, you have chosen the first pain, the pain of hard work. There's no promise that it's going to be easy. In fact, I'm going to promise you it's going to be damn hard and challenging. It will knock you on your ass. It'll steal your time. You'll land on your butt more times than you can ever imagine. Because that type of pain, when you choose it, is fierce and it's immediate. But if you don't choose it, life just goes on. Rather than getting up tomorrow at 6 o'clock and going to the gym or a run or hitting the rowing machine or meditating or reading or whatever you think would be an improvement for you, you can just stay in your warm, cozy bed underneath your blanket and hit that snooze button. Ooh, that's an instant reward. That comfort, that safety. Ooh, but boy, that's a lure. And that's just a mind trick. It's a game, man. That's your comfort zone tricking you into saying, hey, hey, this, is, this feels good, so it must be right. But we know what happens later on. Pain of regret. We are either growing or we are shrinking every single day. Our comfort zone is either growing, our strength, our competency, our confidence, our ability to love. It's only growing or shrinking every day. It cannot stay at the same level because life changes. We make choices. We make, we say things. We do things. We feel things. We take action on things or we choose not to. So we are always shrinking or growing every day. It really comes down to what do you want to do? Who are you? And who do you want to become? You might recall for some of you um, listeners who've been with us for a long time, or if you haven't, maybe you've gone back to some of the previous episodes. We did a previous episode called The Troop, Your True Peak Identity. I think that was the title of it uh, several months ago. And we're going to talk on that. Well, before we wrap up today, we're going to discuss a quick thing you can do to help you to find out who you are and who you want to become, or at least who you want to become. But when I look at starting off today talking about my fear of success, I've known I've had that for a long time, and I've I really have I've worked on it a great deal, and and I, I look back at the top ten most professionally successful clients I've ever worked with. And I, I, this took me about a week and a half to really, I get to remember who they were. You know, it's been almost 27 years of coaching and uh, successful people. And out of that top 10, I think it was, was it seven, seven or eight I, that we diagnosed as having fear of success, even though they were highly successful. It's an epidemic. And go again, go back to episode, what did I say, number eight and March 7th of 2022, if you really want to get a good in-depth understanding of what fear of success is. We are so innately programmed to avoid challenges and pain. And in order for us to find that true high level of ourselves, we have to, we have to go right at pain. We have to accept pain. In fact, we have to embrace pain and challenges and actually realize they are really our comrade to grow. And here's why. I've ever heard the story of the cod and the catfish. Now, decades ago, uh, people in the West Coast were wanted to taste the sweet flesh of the codfish. And I guess it was primarily grown uh, in the Atlantic Ocean on the East Coast. So they decided to catch cod, ship them across the country, I believe on trains, you know, in big buckets of, of, of salt water, big tanks of salt water. Um, and they would ship them across the country. 
And when they would get over to California, take them out, and they realize, ah, oh, this meat tastes like crap. The, the 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 meat, the muscle in the cod had really grown weak. It had atrophied, leaving a taste that was far less than desirable. So they tried this over and over, same poor quality. So finally, they got together, and they decided there was something missing in the transportation. You know, they had the proper water right from the ocean, from where the codfish were living in, in the Atlantic. They had vegetation. They had food in there, all this stuff. Proper amount of light coming in, yet something was missing. You know what it was? Catfish. Now, catfish are the predator in the wild to cod. Catfish kill and eat cod. <laughs> so you've got to be thinking, well, why would they put, if they're not surviving now very well, why would we put a natural predator in there? They said, well, that's the only thing missing. So let's put a few. So they sprinkled a few catfish into this tanks of cod going from the west, the east coast to the west coast. And they got to California, opened up the tanks, tried them, perfect, just like they were on the East Coast. Why? Because the catfish kept the cod on edge. The catfish kept a, a challenge in front of the cod. Without the catfish, the cod atrophied. There was no natural predators. They got lazy. They lost their need for survival, their, their instinct for survival. They just kind of swam around and ate, lived a life of luxury. They, that's their, that's the medical, that, that's the, uh, the man sitting on the couch eating Doritos, drinking beer, watching Netflix all day rather than working out eating healthy foods. Seems like a great life, right? Without those challenges, just like the catfish, we do not survive well. We definitely do not thrive. What are your catfish? What are those things that you're afraid of? What are those things that you despise doing? Think of the most challenging part of your job or your personal life and how much you, have, you kind of fret doing those things. I have certain things. I don't like to lift weights. I dread lifting weights. I dread role-playing speeches. There's a couple. I dread typing when I'm writing my book. I dread it. I don't like getting gas either. I got some weird quirks about things I just don't like doing. So you have to think about those things. The things that you dislike most about your what you have to do in your personal life and your professional life. Then you have to ask yourself two questions. By doing these things, am I bringing out the worst in myself? Because that's usually what you think. These things bring out the worst in me. Me role-playing. Me uh, writing. Lifting weights. No. I, you automatically think they bring out the worst in me because you hate doing them. Odds are. With the right mindset and proper action, these things are actually bringing out the best in you. These are the things that strengthen you. They build you. They design you into being the man or woman you have always been destined to become. These are your personal catfish. Your challenges, your pain, they are not your enemy. They're not our enemies. They are our tools and our paths to becoming that true level, to finding that angel in the marble. Our world right now requires people like you who can ask those two questions. Who am I and who do I want to become? Who can look in that block of marble and see the angel and, and realize that it's going to be painful for me to sculpt through that and get back to my true peak identity, to peak my highest possible level. But you're okay with that because you understand that you only have two choices, the pain of sculpting and hard work and, and, and sweat and blood and tears right now or the pain of regret later. And then the uh, per, people like you who realize these challenges that I've been running from, these challenges that I've been afraid of, they're not there to hurt me. They're there to grow, to strengthen me, to challenge me, to make me stronger. My fear of success, my insecurities, they're not there to hurt me. 
they're there for me to prove to myself and to the world how badly I, I want to scale those walls of life and get to the next level. Yours are too. Yours are too. I'm going to give you a quick exercise. We're not going to spend a ton of time on this. You can go back and listen to the True Peak Identity episode. I think we go into more detail on that one. But I'm going to recommend you take a piece of paper and list out the top most important roles you play in life. Husband, wife, mother, father, son, brother, sister, you know, salesperson, coach. List five to 10 of the primary roles you play in life. And don't forget to include include your number one role, which is you, the role you play for yourself physically, spiritually, intellectually, financially, emotionally. And then after each one of those roles, don't put 15 roles, five to 10, man, just put your most important ones down. After each one, list out what it would look like if you were perfect in that role, let's say you're a dad, you put father to my children and bonus, maybe bonus children. If you have some bonus children out there, stepchildren, you might say, I am an incredibly active, engaged, loving, respectful, supportive father to my children. I treat them with the utmost respect, dignity, and unconditional love. I am a role model for each and every one of them. There, boom. Did you notice that I didn't say I want to be or I'm going to be? You put I am. And you put the most perfect version of what you see. What when you sculpt away that marble and you got to that angel, what would be the perfect version you would play as a father, as a mother, as a husband, as a salesperson, as a doctor, as a janitor, whatever it is you are, whatever roles you play in life. And you write those down. And every morning, read those off out loud. Every morning, read those off out loud. And if you want to get this process jump started, read it, do it again at night before you go to bed. Within an hour of getting up in the morning and within the last hour of going to bed. Because what that is, now we have just, as, we have just created and described the answer to that second question, who do I want to become? That is your two peak identity. That is the angel in the marble. Do that enough and you will notice a pattern. You will notice that you start to innately, instinctively, habitually, naturally do and behave more like the person you described. Sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. I do this exercise and I've done it for years and I find myself about to make a decision one way or the other. And I have to ask myself, which decision most respects my true peak identity? What role is this decision impacting? And which one of the decisions I have is going to impact it in the most positive way? It gets a little tricky when you start describing yourself, like the role, the one role you play is just you, you are you. And then you have to decide, okay, as me, outside of the roles I play externally, the roles I play internally, who am I? Who do I want to be? I had a gentleman uh, two years ago doing this exercise, and thankfully, over the course of several months, it made a dramatic impact on his sobriety. He wrote, I no longer drink alcohol, because he was trying to stop. And I said, well, you got to remember something. Your, your, le- your right brain doesn't understand negative words like, I no longer all it hears is I drink alcohol. It's the way our brain is wired. So I, we turned it into now him to set of saying that he said, I am a sober man. I have read uh, true peak identities that say, people say I am a very healthy, energetic, sober, uh, athletic man. I am a man of, uh, I'm a, uh, I'm an incredibly, uh, confident, courageous, competent, patient, empathetic man, woman, whatever you are. Whatever, however you want to describe yourself, describe it. Use adjectives that are powerful. Create the best version of yourself and write it down and read it once a day or best case, or, or if not one, twice a day, once a day. And if you really 
are confused by this. This might take me a long time. You really can't grasp it. You can email me. You can find my email on my on my uh, website, bamboolab3.com, and I'll send you a copy of mine as a template. I would have no problem doing that. You know, I just think that when you look at you creating your life and trying to grow and change, one of the biggest obstacles we face is status quo, is staying exactly where we are. And when we do that, it is, it is the most dangerous position to be in. It leaves us the most um, vulnerable in a bad way. It leaves us extremely open to all kinds of ills when we just stay the same every day, go through the motions, go through the motions, don't really gain you can be at a place for 30 years and you don't really gain 30 years of experience. You gain one year, you just repeat it 30 times. The goal in life is to gain 30 years of experience every year by growing and growing. 1% change every day is not a lot. But boy, over the course of the year, at whatever you're changing, you're 37 times better than you were at the beginning of the year if you focus on 1% change. 1% growth. And it all starts with understanding who you are. You're good, you're bad, you're beautiful, you're ugly, your fears. And knowing who you want to become, your true peak identity, the angel in the marble. Because did you wake up this morning to be, to me, to be mediocre? Do you feel like you deserve more Deserve to give more, to live more, to love more, to be more. I have a feeling I know. And whether you believe you deserve more or not, I know for a fact that you do. You're beautiful. You're amazing. I don't give a shit about your past. I don't give a shit about what you've done or the thoughts you've had. It doesn't matter to me. At this moment, I'm not looking at you and seeing a block of marble. I'm looking at you and seeing the angel. And that's all I want you to do. Who are you? And who do you want to become? As always, I just want to take the time to thank every one of you for tuning in to the Bamboo Lab podcast. I'm just going to really recommend get out there this week, man. Strive, love, and live. I appreciate you all more than I could ever, ever really, really share. Far more than you realize. Until next week. <laughs>